Hey guys, Hasib here, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the high level forms. So, if you're new to high level, this video might be really useful for you. I'm going to talk about how to create forms, how to set up different kinds of automations, and how to use how to make the best use of high level forms, basically. So, let's go to I'm actually in a sub account right now, and in order to create forms, I need to go to sites and I need to go to forms. You can create different folders. So, I have created different folders for my different kinds of forms. And I'm going to create a form inside test folder. So let's start. As I hit start from scratch, it gave me a basic form with some fields. So what I can do is I can just say contact form. Uh, I'm creating this form as a contact form for my website or anything. So uh, let's get rid of all the fields so I can show you how to create them. Now, first of all, I could do full name from here. And then I could do email. I could also do phone number. So let's bring full name to the top and then email then phone number. And what I can do is I can just uh, after saving it, obviously save your form, keep saving your form once you change something. Otherwise it might get lost. Then I can just go to buttons and then add a button here. Now, if you want to add something custom, you you have to go to custom fields because you might have questions or queries that you want them to answer but those fields do not appear here because it's different right they don't appear here you can create however you can create those fields here right so just go to custom fields and add and i'm going to say multi-line and i'm going to say how can we help so that you're asking through the form how can we help general info placeholder not needed and as soon as you hit create it's going to create a general info custom field for you so you can either create like contact uh field general info field or additional info so contact field is like related to the contact right uh phone number date of birth you know all those things but some of them are already in the default fields so if, if you want questions that are related to the contact you could go with contact fields uh, or if you want like any kind of general info regarding the query you could use general info so how can we help falls under you know general info any additional or optional info you could use additional info for that so I've, I've used general info what I can do is I can just drag it how can we help and then that's all you know so you can keep creating fields no matter how many fields you want in custom fields so that takes care of it now about styling the form I could just uh, click on the styles option here and I could just say no label needed or I could just keep the labels and for each field you could change the placeholder like example John email example John at mail.com you know you could just use placeholders and then just go 888 555 and then how can we help we could just say enter your message and um, you could delete this but I highly recommend keeping this and then change the link to your uh, the terms and conditions just use your website's terms and conditions uh, right here and then hit save now about styling the form just go to styles and if you want to add any text to it you could add a text right here from from the elements uh, contact us right and then you could just say contact us just middle align this you could change the font from here maybe use pop-ins and then that's all from here and then change the font color as well. I mean, there's a lot of things for you to explore. It's going to take a whole day to go over all the settings. But these are pretty self-explanatory. You know what I mean? So uh, you could just play around with it and you'll know a lot about them. So I'll get rid of the form padding from top. And then also some of the padding from the left and right. Because if you embed this to your website, it looks real weird. So I'll just get rid of that and uh, if you want to change the field height right so here just search for field style right so i'm gonna get rid of the corner radius so you can see that these are edgy and sharp now uh, 
width fine okay top padding will be 14 bottom padding also 14 so now you can see it's it has a bit of more spacing now and just play around with the other stuff if you want to change the button color or anything you could change it from here so i'll change the button color to red now or just put any hex code you want so just put the hex code here and then corner radius i'll get rid of the corner radius from here set it to one i'm gonna say 14 or maybe 12. And you can change the button text from here that's all now about styling there's a lot of things you can do about uh pre-built themes you you can use a theme from uh from this set over here i highly recommend not using them because these might not represent your brand so uh just use your own branding and just customize them according to how you want it now about the form submission action like what happens when they submit the form right you could either display a message thank you for submitting this form we will get back in, uh, get in touch with you soon or you could send them to a thank you page so in that case you need to open url and you'll just say website.com slash thank you and this will be website.com is basically your website url right so this will be, will be uh, you know myawesomecompany.com slash thank you so just have a thank you page and put that link to that thank you page here so whenever they submit the form they go, go to that thank you page so if i hit save it's gonna save it now about integrating the form that's really important so hit integrate and then you could do copy the embed code so the form can be embedded to your website whether it's built on wordpress on squarespace on wix on any kind of website builder you could just copy this embed code and put this form code to your page where you want to show this form and that's gonna show the form but you can also use this form independently regardless of what page this is embedded in so i'll just copy the link from here and then paste it in a new window as you can see you can use the form independently if you're using the form independently then you could go with any of the themes because that makes more sense but if you're using it on a web page or maybe in one of the landing pages you have inside go high level you don't have to use the themes right so just uh, integrate it through an embed code or directly use it from the link here so that's how you do it now talk let's talk about the automation a little bit right so I'll go to automation what happens when they submit the form they go to the thank you page or they see a message right so I'm gonna go to automation in one of my folders here you can create folders for automations as well I'm gonna create a new workflow to handle the actions of this form submission so whenever someone submits the form i want them to receive um, an email probably an sms as well but just just an email uh so to begin with i'm gonna say form submitted automation you could name it whatever you want by the way and the trigger is form submitted right so when the form is submitted i want this workflow to execute and all the automations to happen so i'm gonna say form submitted I'm going to, from filter, I'm going to select the form. Form is contact from this one I just created, right? So the trigger is done. Now the workflow will execute for whoever submits the form. What needs to happen really? So first of all, I want to send an email. And from name, so this is from name, right? So this is this will be me. And this will be uh, my email. And subject thank you for submitting the form and i'm gonna put the email body here how hi and from custom values i'm gonna say contact dot first name so this is gonna dynamically fetch the name of the contact that submitted the form thank you for submitting the form i will get back in touch with you shortly you can do whatever you want with the email by the way just write any anything and then just save it now i do want to receive a notification so it could be either an email or an app notification or the browser notification or an sms so i'm going to go with email from name will be uh, hsm so this is my crm name info at hsm.com to user type i could either do custom email so I'll do custom email. So I'm, I'm going to send it to myself info at this. Let's say this is my email. Subject is uh, a new 
contact form submission so th if this is your client you're creating the form for you this will be your client's email right so the client needs to receive notification on a form submission hi uh you could say contact full name this will be dynamically replaced by the name of the guy who submitted the form uh and then contact email and contact phone submitted the contact form on the website so that's my notification right there you could also customize it according to your need and then you could also add a tag saying contact form right so i'll add a tag here so tag has been added you could also assign this tag uh, this contact to yourself so i'm gonna assign it to myself this really helps in sales and nurture because you could do a bunch of other automations as long as the the contact is assigned to a user and don't forget to publish so uh, there's a bunch of other stuff you could do you could send sms you could also you know add them to other workflows you could add them to a nurture long-term nurture workflow you know all those things you could uh, add voicemails so just just explore the different kinds of automation you could perform using the workflow feature this is really powerful guys going back to the form what you can also do now this is a new feature really so this feature allows you to accept payments so i'm not i'm not sure like if you want to accept payments through a contact form but let's say this was a donation form right you can accept donations i mean you can accept payments through go high level forms now so i'll just add a new element to it saying payment and instead of payment i'm going to say donation and i'm going to say here payment type is custom amount let's do live mode because if it's in test mode it's just going to let you test it but you cannot do real payments with it just don't forget to publish it to live now okay donation it is now custom amounts you could suggest a different preset amounts for this you could also do 15.99 you also do 59.99 anything right and then include other amount as well okay so you are asking people to put their custom amount if they want and in the footer don't forget to do 100 secure and safe payments this is really safe once that's done you could just see the preview of the form here and this will show you a payment option now so people can actually do payments like donations you know so this is also something uh, really powerful if you want to use it or you could also do sell products right so if you have a product created inside your go high level under payments let me show you what i'm talking about so if i go to payments and then products products are basically it could be a physical product it could be a service it could be anything you know so i'm i'm, I'm gonna say this is my product i want to take payments for using that form so i'm going to go back to the form and go to the form open it what i could do is uh i could just click on this and then add the product here so i'm gonna say facebook add monthly fee i'm gonna get rid of the image because there's no image currently there and now if i save and then i open the form again it's changed right so it's not custom it's not asking for custom payments anymore it's asking for a specific amount which is 350 pounds and that's it you know so these are the bunch uh, a bunch of stuff you could perform or you could do using go high level forms including automation styling submit actions and everything there's a lot of things for you to explore trust me so uh just see what you can do with styles you know setting backgrounds setting, changing colors you know font sizes and everything and you could also uh use pixel id if you're using using facebook ads to drive traffic to the forms or to the page where the form is situated you know all those things so hope this video uh helps understand go high level forms better and different uh kind of automations really related to it and uh yeah subscribe if you like it and then i'll see you in the next one mm -hmm.